let's talk about smartphones. I've got a couple of them right here. Now, smartphones, they completely change the technology game because now all of a sudden, everybody is walking around with pretty much a networked computer in their pockets and they have access to all of the world's information at their fingertips. And of course, most people use this to browse social media and to look at cats. But there's another game that smartphones changed. They completely changed the digital and online privacy game. Before smartphones, we really just had to worry about these issues with our computers, but fixing the privacy issues with computers is pretty straightforward and very, very well documented. But with smartphones, it's a whole lot more difficult. And you know, it really blows my mind the number of people that will start getting into this subject of digital privacy and they'll follow all the steps to mitigating it on the computer. They'll install a more privacy respecting browser. They'll start using a more privacy respecting search engine. They might even go and install GNU Linux and use it as their primary operating system, but they don't give any thought to the phone at all. So let's talk about that today and some steps that you can take to mitigate these different issues. So let's start with the software. Okay, on your phone, you probably got a whole bunch of different apps that are installed there. But have you ever noticed that oftentimes these apps are requiring access to things, they're requiring permissions that it doesn't really seem like they would need? Let's take location data, for example. So. This is something that you might expect an app like Google Maps or Waze or anything where it makes practical sense for the app to know your location, to request it. But then when we start getting into things like alarm clocks or calculators or note-taking apps, why on earth would something like that need to know your location? Well, they're out there. There's plenty of apps like that in the App Store that by default are going to use your location data. And the issue that we have with this is whoever developed that app could potentially be accessing this data. It could potentially be reporting it back to them. And you probably don't want some random person out there knowing your location at all times. It's already bad enough that the FBI and that the um, person who made your cell phone, whether it's Apple or Google, already knows this stuff and also your local police. Uh, because in case you didn't know that, the local police can subpoena the cellular towers to get location data from them of everybody if they're trying to find just one bad guy. So how can we start dealing with the app problem? Well, I highly recommend using only open source apps because generally these apps are not going to do any of this additional data collection to begin with, like an open source note-taking app, isn't going to require access to your location data. And even if it does do this, you can audit the source code yourself to see, is it packaging up this data and sending it anywhere that it's not supposed to? Now, with using all open source software on your phone, we've already alienated a large portion of the smartphone community because if you're an iPhone user, you can't really take this that far. I'm sure that there's a lot of open source apps available in the Apple App Store, but the operating system itself, iOS, not open source. It's completely proprietary and there's nothing that you can do to circumvent this. You can't flash a different operating system onto your Apple phone. There isn't some open source version of iOS. Um, so you're pretty much stuck at this point. Really, if you wanna get better privacy, you should probably switch to something like an Android phone. But even then, most Android phones by default have a lot of problems. So Android, the operating system is open source. However, when you get phones like a Samsung phone, for example, a Galaxy, Samsung has all kinds of proprietary software that they install on top of Android. And by default, they're making you use all these applications and a lot of them you can't even disable. They're just going to be running in the background no matter what. So to get a completely open source phone or at least open source as far as the software is concerned, you have to flash a custom ROM onto it. Typically the ones that I would recommend are Calyx OS or Graphene OS, 
on a Pixel phone because this gives you the option to both flash a custom ROM and then relock your bootloader. Okay, so if you've done that, if you've installed a custom ROM onto your phone and install F-Droid so that you can easily get access to open source software that's respecting your privacy, and you're also following the same advice we would use for a computer, practicing good OPSEC, um, not using Google search because then Google is going to be spying on you, we've pretty much taken care of the software problem after you followed all those steps. Now let's get into the hardware. And this is where things get really, really tricky because smartphones by their very nature are tracking you, okay? In order for a smartphone to connect to cellular towers, in order for you to make a call, do a text message or send any kind of data, that cellular tower needs to know your location at some level. It needs to know roughly how far you are from the tower and chances are you're gonna be connected to multiple cellular towers at any given time, unless you go way out into the boonies. Once you're connected to three cellular towers, whoever is able to get access to that lo uh, location data can then triangulate you down to something like a city block. Like they can actually get really, really accurate. And don't even get me started on 5G. 5G is, um, it's as accurate as Wi-Fi, as far as I know, for pinpointing where someone's location is. Uh, and in case you didn't know, the FBI and um, you know other government agencies routinely use this data to track people uh, like terrorists. They've been able to figure out exactly where somebody is in a building in order to do a drone strike or some other type of tactical strike to eliminate this person. Uh, and like I was saying earlier, police will get this location data all the time. If some kind of crime is committed in your area and the bad guy flees, the police, they'll just go to the owners of the cellular towers, they'll subpoena them for that data, and then they can see where everybody is. And again, this is accurate down to a city block. Sometimes it even ends up being more accurate than that. So we have this issue where your phone is constantly pinging its location but you might not need it to constantly do that. You probably don't want it to do this unless you're actively using your phone to send some kind of data. So how do we deal with this? Well, maybe you're thinking, I'll just turn off my cellular, I'll turn off my Wi-Fi, and maybe even you'll pull your SIM card out of the phone so that it's not able to connect to any networks, right? Well, this isn't really the case. So. Here's the thing, SIM cards, they don't really mean anything as far as being able to connect to a cellular tower goes. The antenna in your cell phone is what actually makes the connection to the cellular tower. Um, and then same thing goes for disabling the uh, cellular data, doing that software disable in your phone. Because if you disable cellular, if you take out your SIM card, you're still able to make emergency calls. You're still able to call 911 and reach police, fire departments, and all those different things. So it's clearly still making a connection to the cellular towers. The only way that you can really be sure that it's not connecting to them is to disable the power to those antennas. Now there is one phone that I'm aware of that lets you do this uh, specifically to isolate the antennas and disable power, and it's the Librem 5. It has um, hardware switches for, I believe, cellular, microphones, and the camera. So that's one approach to dealing with it. And of course, 99.9% .9 of cell phones out there are not gonna let you do this. Uh, another option is to remove the battery. But again, 99.9% .9 of modern smartphones do not have removable batteries. So that's not really gonna be an option for you to disable cellular either. And it's also worth mentioning because this is something that people who have dumb phones might bring up because a lot of time they uh, will let you still remove the batteries. Um, when it comes to that, when you take the battery out of a phone, it's, not completely powered down. There's still some components in the phone that are getting power, mainly the phone's internal clock. So you might have noticed this before when you take a battery out. Uh, same thing applies to laptops. If you remove a laptop's battery for the few that do let you do that and you leave it out for a couple of days, 
Then you connect the battery. And then before you connect that device to Wi-Fi, cellular, or any type of network for it to download this stuff from NTP, you'll probably notice that your phone has maintained perfect time and it is still on the right day. So the reason for this is that there are separate internal batteries in not just phones, but laptops and desktops as well that are used for maintaining this time. Um, and this is completely theoretical. I, I don't know for sure if there's been any case where these batteries have somehow been used to track somebody even when the main battery was removed. Uh, seems like it's a lot more difficult to pull something like that off. But you should know that even if you remove the primary battery from your phone, that it's not 100% off. Maybe you're thinking that you'll just turn your phone off, but how do you even know that the phone is really off? Because if it's free and open source, okay, we can probably trust that when you click that power button, it actually is sending a shutdown signal to the phone. But what if your phone has been compromised in some way? We know with Pegasus, for example, that it's able to compromise a cell phone just by you receiving a text message. There's no uh, additional user intervention required for your cell phone to get taken over by Pegasus. So if that has happened to your phone, you have to assume that there's something installed in it which has changed the feature, the, the shutdown feature, both when you press the button and when you press the touch screen button to shut it down, that it's going into some kind of a fake shutdown mode. Um, if you disable the screen on your phone and you disable all of the lights, to the average person's eye, a phone's going to look like it's off, but it could still be transmitting cellular data. And these antennas don't use that much power. The screen is the primary power user, the thing that primarily uses power on your phone. So when it comes to knowing whether or not our phones are off and being able to have control over the phone's hardware, we've kind of run into a wall. There's not really a whole lot more that we can do beyond this, except we can block the phone's ability to communicate with these cellular towers. So what I have here is called an anti-EMF bag. Sometimes it's called a Faraday bag. Um, but basically, if you look on the inside, the um, bag is basically lined with some kind of a metal foil. Now with this, it's, it's fabric. So there's some kind of a metal foil between this shiny fabric and this black fabric on the outside. Um, and you don't necessarily need to get something fancy like this. You could get the same effect with a sheet of tin foil. If you wrap your phone in tin foil or you put it in some kind of a uh, anti-EMF bag like this, no signals are able to go in or out. And this applies to cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, AM radio, everything is going to be or AM, FM radio, everything is going to be blocked by this bag. So you can be fairly certain if a phone is placed in this bag that it is not actively tracking you because there's no way that it's actually going to be able to connect to the cellular towers. Now again, if I were to, um, I don't know, pretend to be a fed, what would I do if I was in the shoes of the Alphabet Boys trying to track somebody? I would probably set it up so that when their phone loses connection, it activates the microphone and it starts recording all of the audio so that at least the next time it connects, I'll have some type of intelligence that was gathered and I'll be able to send that to my spooky CIA servers. Um, so that's something else to keep in mind, but at least as far as blocking the transmission of cellular data, that is the way to go about it anti-EMF bag, Faraday bag, whatever you want to call it, or just some good old tinfoil. I mean, hell, you can make one yourself. Get some tinfoil and maybe uh, some kind of a bag, you know, maybe sew it to it and bam, you've got your own homemade anti-EMF bag. So these are just some things to consider that I want you to think about on your journey to have better digital privacy. Don't overlook your cell phone. More data is being collected from you via the cell phone than your computers, your smart TVs, or anything else like that. 
Um, and unfortunately, the only way that we can be certain that it's not tracking you is to put it in something like this. So make sure that you look into that, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and comment to hack the algorithm and follow me on Odyssey. Have a great rest of your day.